On today's episode, I am flipping this ugly duckling of a nightstand and turning it into a beautiful swan as part of my ugly duckling challenge. I want to show you all that you do not have to go out and buy new furniture. You can just make over that random stuff you have in the garage or the stuff you put in the guest room because you don't know where you want to put it, but you don't really want to get rid of it. Or it's the stuff that you're using constantly, but you really wish that it looked different or you saw something in a store and you thought, oh, I wish I had that set. But in reality, you can make your current furniture look just as beautiful as the stuff that you see in the stores. So while you're watching this makeover today, I want you to think about how you can shop your own home. I bet there is a ton of really great stuff that you already have in your house that you could either flip or reimagine or even cover with a tablecloth. <laughs> There's a million different things that you can do with what you already own. I have this theory that everything we ever need in this world has already been made and we just need to find it secondhand. Sometimes you can find it in your own home like this beautiful nightstand. I would have never guessed that it was gonna turn out this amazing, so I'm excited to see how yours can turn out at home. So here's to hoping that I can inspire you to shop your own home today. Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey and I love making old things look beautiful again, decorating with secondhand finds, antiques, thrift shopping. I love all that amazing stuff. So if that's something that you're into, then consider hitting the subscribe button down below and don't forget to hit that notifications bell so you don't miss my live chats when I premiere my videos. This piece is what I'm working on for today. I am doing my Ugly Duckling Challenge. I do this once every season. And what the Ugly Duckling Challenge is, is I challenge other YouTubers to find the ugliest piece that they possibly can, secondhand, on the side of the road. I don't care where they get it from, but they need to turn it into something absolutely beautiful. And the winner is chosen based on the best transformation. For this end of summer ugly duckling challenge, I decided to go with a theme and that theme is make it sparkle. So I am challenging everybody who's participating to add a sparkle element. This could be literally anything and I hope that their imaginations are going to run wild because I am not picky. <laughs> they could add actual sparkles, they could have gold or silver hardware, they could have glass knobs, there can be pearl, I don't care what they do. I just want to see people make these ugly ducklings sparkle in one way or another. This piece I picked up from an auction and it was in bad shape. I definitely needed to sand this before I painted it. I'm using my surf prep sander. Um, I'll have my sander link down below in case you are interested in checking that out. But the reason I'm using this sander is because it has a really nice padded um, attachment that you can put on. And this nightstand has a ton of curves so I definitely needed a padded sander or else it would end up messing up all those beautiful curves or I would have had to sand it all by hand and if you do not have a sander like this or maybe you just don't have it in your budget right now to get one you definitely can sand your pieces by hand I'm only sanding it like a scuff sanding to make sure that my paint's going to stick really well to it but um, if you wanted to sand by hand for your scuff sanding you definitely could after I've scuff sanded the surface of the body of the piece, I use a leaf blower to blow off all the dust. And then after I blow off all the dust, I will go back over it with a rag to make sure I wipe off all the fine dust that the leaf blower didn't get off. And this works really well and it's way faster than trying to clean all the dust by hand. But again, if you do not have that equipment at home, it's not necessary. You can just do it by hand. Next, I'm going to spray the body of this piece with shellac. Notice I'm not doing anything to the top. The reason I'm not doing anything to the top yet is because I'm going to strip the whole top. You probably saw it in the preview of the video, but I do not need to shellac the top since I'm going to be removing all the finish there. It would just make it even harder to do that. But I want to make sure to get a very good coat of the shellac on the whole piece. And I'm also going to fill in the holes where the hardware was because I'm going with a different uh, hardware on here that you saw already in the preview. But I that is my make it sparkle uh, element for this challenge. And the hardware is so gorgeous. I had bought it a while back ago and didn't know what exactly I was gonna put it on. But then I 
um, thought about doing it for this ugly duckling challenge and I realized I had only bought two of them and had to go back to the store and buy the third one and by the time I went back to get the third one they were no longer half off so if I were you and you're watching this and you want to use the same hardware as me wait until it goes half off again because the hardware goes half off all the time and I got them at Hobby Lobby they were $13.99 full price each or when you get them half off then it's about $7.50 so in total I spent about $28 on all three but it was definitely worth it for the look that I get in the end. I'm starting out sanding with my surf prep and then I realize that I'm going to need something a little beefier so I pull out my orbital sander because the orbital sander has a lot <laughs> of power and uh, it definitely makes your hand tired after a while. This is sped up I think like 3,000 times faster <laughs> than I actually sanded it but it did only take me about 15 minutes or so to sand all the finish off of the top. I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper to get all the finish off and then I go over it again with a 220 grit sander uh, or sandpaper because I want the finish to be very nice and smooth. Now along the edge here you'll see that it has a bit of a curve to it. Well it was it's something I've practiced and done a lot of times but you can watch how I hold the sander in order to get into that curve without destroying the side of the dresser. This top piece of wood is actually a thin laminate um, piece of, of uh, wood there so I didn't want to sand all the way through it and so I had to be very very careful and went back and forth between the powerful sander and then using the gentle sander my surf prep sander so when you're doing these edges just just be very careful take it slow don't be too aggressive and make sure that you're not damaging the veneer um, I meant I said laminate earlier, but I meant to say veneer. <laughs> um, so, and then the corners down here, I just hand sanded off that wood filler. I use the Dixie Bell wood filler because it doesn't stink, it dries really fast, and it's extremely easy to sand. Although it does shrink quite a bit when you use this wood filler, so you have to normally do a couple layers unless you extremely overfill it like I did. And that's why I didn't have to do a few layers since I overfilled it by a whole lot over here on these drawers. But I have to sand all that off and also do my smooth sanding on here and scuff sanding to get it prepped to paint. While I'm finishing up sanding these pieces, I want to explain a little bit about why I spray my pieces with shellac before I paint them. And the reason that I do that is because shellac is literally like the only thing that I will guarantee you will hold in any of the stains from coming through your paint. It may not always work with just one coat, but it does work. Sometimes it takes two, but it's really the only product I know of that will work. Other primers might say they're stain blocking and then they don't actually work as well. Anything with shellac in it is gonna work. The paint that I'm using is Fusion Mineral Paint. The color that I'm using is called Victorian Lace. It is a beautiful bright white color. And I got this paint from my friend Bonda and she has a small business where you can buy paint online from her shop. It's called The Painted Heirloom. And I will have her small business shop linked down below in case you wanna buy some paints or supplies. I have a few more things that she sent me to try out that I can't wait to try, which is specifically a paint inlay I've never seen before but it looks like it's going to be extremely fun to use and it's like a blue and white wall chinoiserie looking pattern so I'm really excited to try that out but this was my first time ever using fusion mineral paint if you are somebody who paints furniture a lot you might be thinking how is it possible that you've never used fusion before if you've been painting furniture for like five million years but I just haven't gotten around to buying it it's one of the paints that's kind of harder to find in person, which is why I'm getting it online from Bonda. But um, I, I feel like, like you find other brands around a lot and I don't see Fusion around a lot. Like it's kind of rare to find that to be able to buy it in person. And so I just haven't done it yet. And I've heard such amazing things from other furniture flippers, specifically a lot of other YouTubers. And even my friend Melanie says that she likes their paint a whole lot. And they also have an enamel paint, I think, which I really want to try. But I just have never tried it yet. So when Vonda had recommended this paint, I was like, yeah, let's try it out. Let's see if it's worth the hype. It is a mineral paint, and it also has its own sealer in it. So it's not like chalk paint. It, um, you don't have to seal it. I still would recommend sealing it on like surfaces that are going to get used a lot. 
but you don't have to seal it like chalk paint. Like if you don't seal chalk paint, you can wipe it off with water. This doesn't work like that. It cures and is like totally sealed in, won't wipe off. It has pretty good coverage. I mean, it's a white and I'm painting over a super dark piece of wood. So of course it's gonna take a few coats. It took me three coats to get really good coverage on this. And then for the top, for the wood, I'm actually gonna use this color Woodwick and water it down and create my own paint wash. If you are somebody who watches a lot of furniture flipping videos, you've probably seen a lot of people do like a green wash or bleached wood looks and things like that. And I wanted to create my own version of that. Although the ones that I've seen specifically on like Instagram, people have these different mixes that they custom make for their wood to make it look like this. And I saw this color and had actually thought about using it to create a wood look on a lamp. But then when I started this, ugly duckling project I thought okay maybe I should test it out on like staining maybe I can actually do a paint wash stain look on this wood because I had a feeling that the wood on the top of this was going to pull really red because the original finish was more of like a mahogany reddish brown wood color and so I wanted to counteract that with a more gray toned brown like this woodwick color and let me tell you it did exactly what I wanted it to. I did have to do one extra step in there and I'll show you, but I was winging it. <laughs> I just used my water bottle, made a mess, added a little bit of water, and then I touched my finger on the actual spoon and where the where this paint wash was to see how opaque it was on my finger because that's how it's going to look over the wood, especially since my finger color is actually kind of the color of the wood. <laughs> But it gave me an idea of how well it was going to um, leave its color behind. And I had done it extremely watered down. And when I did my first brush stroke on here and it came out super reddish, orangey brown, I thought, oh no, this is not going to work. <laughs> right away, I knew this was not going to look good unless I did something to kind of mix it up a little bit, um, pun intended. <laughs> but I did make sure that. I put an entire layer of it because I I uh, didn't want to stop short when it didn't work because then I would have had to sand back that part that I did. Wait for it to dry, then sand it back and start over. So instead, I just made sure I covered everything in this so that the next step that I did wouldn't look blotchy or have different colors going on in it. It's starting out with the whole piece having the same thing going on. So when you're doing this, if you're trying to recreate this after you watch the video, um, don't freak out when the first layer doesn't go the way that you thought it was going to. See how dark that wood tone is. Definitely is not giving me the, the bleached wood look. So I went over it with a whitewash stain. And this is a Dixie Belle um, Voodoo stain. And it's a water-based gel stain. Which I don't, I don't really feel like this is a gel stain. It's more like a whitewash. I'm not sure why they call it a gel stain because it's not gel. But it does work really well, and since it's water-based, I can water it down and um, do it as heavy or as light as I want to and keep wiping it back until I get the look that I want. So I used that whitewash to calm down <laughs> all that red so that it would kind of be like a primer then for the um, wood color that I'm going to do next with that wood wick. So make sure you let each layer that you're doing when you're whitewashing or paint washing completely dry before you do the next one or else it'll just wipe off what you were doing before. It'll wipe off the previous layer. So I made sure to let that completely dry before I went over it again, although it doesn't look like it since I am editing the video and can cut out the time in between. But I went over it again making sure to get all the edges, make sure the whole thing is getting the same coverage all the way through. And then I'm gonna go back with a paper towel and just wipe off the excess. And I'm gonna repeat this process a couple times. I know that this part of the video might seem a little bit boring since I'm kind of repeating the process, but I definitely think it's important to show how I'm doing it because when I watch other people do this paint wash, um, I usually only ever see it on uh, Instagram just because that's like the only kind of videos I have time to watch with my little ones is short little videos or like shorts on YouTube and they don't show a whole lot about how it works on those short videos. It's just like more of a fun before and after thing. So 
I always thought, okay, I don't know what they're doing. They seem to be mixing all these different browns. I don't know what's happening. So I wanted to show you exactly what I did. And you can see the difference between letting it dry and doing another coat over the dry wash. See how different that it looks now, how much more opaque you can see in that wood tone that I'm creating. And then you definitely want to sand before you do your clear coat because when you use a paint wash over raw wood, the grain will pop out and it will become like kind of like, like splintery or like, I don't know, like snaggy. <laughs> this, the wood grain just like swells up and sticks out and it makes the surface very rough. So you want to make sure to sand before you put your poly on. I'm using a flat water-based polyurethane. That This happens to be a Dixie Bell brand, but you don't have to use Dixie Bell. I just like theirs since it doesn't smell bad. And I'm applying it using this uh, sponge. Make sure that you wet your sponge and then wring it out completely before you use it for your clear coat. And make sure you do several coats because you want the top part of your furniture to be the most durable out of everything since that's where you're going to set all your stuff and you don't want it to get water rings or dings or whatever it might be. Now I'm going to do the same white Victorian lace color that... Um, that I did on the drawers for the whole rest of the body and I did three coats of this although I'm only going to show you me painting two coats I don't want it to get too boring and repetitive here of course feel free to use the fast forward button but I personally enjoy watching something get painted it makes me feel motivated to get up and go paint something myself in fact if you're watching this and your brain works like mine go get your project and start working on it while I'm working on mine <laughs> <laughs> or start planning it and start looking online on Pinterest while this video is going and stay motivated. Let this video motivate you to do your pieces. Remember this whole project is meant to inspire you to shop your house and make over things that you have using what you have. You don't have to use all the same things I'm using and if the colors I'm using are not what you even like then just picture you doing over your furniture in the colors that you wish that they were. And Pinterest is a great place for inspiration, and so is just plain old Google, just going on Google and typing in whatever it is that you're interested in. Or you can go on um, websites for very high-end furniture places like Pottery Barn, or Ballard Designs, or Crate and Barrel, all of those very expensive high-end furniture decor places, and look at what they're making and figure out how can you make what you already have look as good as theirs, or look as updated as what they're doing, or just um, in the style that they're doing that you think is really neat. Think about how you can use that aesthetic that style, those color choices, those wood tones, those hot pieces of hardware, whatever it might be that they're doing to make their pieces look so great, figure out how you can make your furniture at home work for you and look good like that, especially if you have solid wood furniture. Lately, I've been seeing on Pottery Barn that they are now selling a bunch of dark, like walnut colored wood tone pieces of furniture that were so outdated like <laughs> a year ago and now it's everywhere all over their website so remember everything comes back in style too so if what you have is not what's cool on the magazines or on HGTV don't worry about it because it's probably going to come back around and the most important thing is that you like what's in your house here's my son helping me he cannot help himself when a power tool comes out or even just any tool comes out He's like, can I help you? Can I help you? I want to help. Mama, can I help? So, of course, I'm going to let him. This is life skills here. And if you have your kids at home or your grandkids come in to hang out, you don't have to stop your projects. This is stuff that's going to help them later in life to have skills, life skills, that will take them far in life and help them save a dollar here and there. Now it's time for me to stage this. I'm staging this in my daughter's bedroom. I'm kind of trying to convince her to keep it <laughs> because I think it looks really beautiful. 
it's not what she had really wanted but once I started staging it with all these random pieces of decor I've got <laughs> she was like I think I want to keep it mom <laughs> I staged it with a lamp that I got from an online auction for dirt cheap and then that vase there I think is actually a candle holder and it was four dollars I probably got it from Ross like years and years ago and then right now Hobby Lobby has really beautiful fall stems that were $2.99 but it's 40% off so they're all $1.49 you heard me $1.49 for this this is like cheaper than Walmart here and if you look for the the flowers like these in the actual flower section they're way more expensive so head over to the actual fall decor aisles and get it where all their like pumpkin picks are and they're dirt cheap like extremely cheap and look at how beautiful they look i'm loving all these taupe and brown colors they look really refined and of course it's giving that pottery barn look that crate and barrel look that's so popular right now with all the browns and the um kind of grayish muted tones that they're coming out with and then i have the eucalyptus leaves in there to bring out some life <laughs> you can't have everything be all brown and all tan the next piece that I'm going to put on here is another picture from Hobby Lobby. I swear I buy everything from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> I wish I was sponsored by Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, please sponsor me. That I got this picture a long time ago when they were on half off sale. Look at this wood finish. I can't believe I achieved this look. I've been seeing so many people do it and thought I could never do that. I could never make my wood look like that. I don't know how those stores, those high end furniture stores make the wood look like that. But now I know it's extremely simple. You just need to use wood wick from Fusion Mineral Paint, water it down, and do a paint wash on your wood. Sometimes you need a little bit of a whitewash beforehand, but it was so easy. I'll definitely be doing this again. Now before you go, don't leave yet, I need you guys to head over to the playlist down below to see the rest of all the Ugly Duckling Challenge pieces. I'm going to need your help picking a winner because they're always so amazing. So make sure to leave tons of comments on their videos letting me know which one you think should win and let them know how amazing they are. The whole point of this challenge is to help get exposure for other artists out there that are not getting the amount of views that they deserve. So we're trying to get even the smallest of channels. Sometimes it's somebody's very first video they've ever made and showing their skills on YouTube, getting them the audience that they deserve. So help me pick a winner. Make sure you watch all of the videos in the playlist. And there will be some extra videos playing or being uploaded throughout the week. So keep checking back just in case somebody was running a little late on their project piece. So don't miss out. Keep coming to check on the Ugly Duckling Challenge. Thanks for watching. Bye.